Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Distinguished speakers, fellow friends, uh, students and lecturers. Um, I am from School of Health Science and not the medical. I am not a medical doctor. <laughs> so you cannot ask me a disease. But I will teach you today a bit about what is the basics inside our blood. You know, if you travel from outside into the body, you have to go into the blood, the white blood cell, so that you can go and search for the compartment that we call nucleus. Inside this nucleus, we will have what we call DNA. This DNA is a genetic material. Um, the most important biomolecule inside our body. And this is also um, the important uh, molecule that can deliver uh, the uh, bioinformation from our body to our offspring, uh, anak cucu, and so on and so, so forth. So I was given a title, um, how much do we know? So what I was thinking that is better for me to talk about the history, because when we learn about the science, we always be given the textbook. But you are getting more and more interested. Things are getting more and more interesting if you go behind the story that being told to you in the textbook. Uh, you see, for the Muslim, if you read Quran, it's just plain, you see. If you go to the Asbab Nuzul, the reason why the Quran was given then it's becoming more and more interesting. So that is the thing. So now we are going to look into the um, history of DNA. Okay. So DNA is a deoxynucleic deoxy ribonucleic acid okay this is uh, the most important molecule in our cells and it was actually being studied by many s earlier scientists we know gregory mendel you know the first uh, monk that uh, used to study uh, inheritance you know how uh, he used uh, uh, p uh, to describe inheritance uh, the principle of mendel 1 and 2 and so on and so forth but if you look into the modern science, um, DNA was actually isolated by Dr. Fischer, Dr. Friedrich Mischer, uh, a Swiss um, nationalities which is uh, um, doing uh, his uh, research uh, in German. So this is uh, Mischer. And then, as we all know that uh, those days, 500 years ago, um, um, world politics was actually um, controlled by the British and Americans. So if you are in Germans, <laughs> your name will not come out, you see. So uh, his finding was actually showing, um, uh, Dr. Misha was actually looking into the um, molecule that he isolated from fast. Okay, from pus, nana, okay. Those days, there are a lot of war. So when the military officer or the soldier came back, you know, they got injured. They developed uh, uh, injury. Okay? So and then after infection, pus will be produced. So Misha was looking into this pus, and then he found out that uh, this, uh, this uh, um, uh, compound contains a lot of phosphorus and nitrogen compound. But he doesn't know. He called the things nuclein. So that was the first word that we took as a nucleic acid today by Dr. Misha. Um, that time, uh, he was a postdoc working in the German lab. So as a foreigner, uh, his boss said, you have to repeat three times, okay? So that it can be really accepted by the scientific community. It's of what happened here. If you're a junior lecturer, your professor will ask you to do three times or like many, many times to show that your result is good. 
So that's why his finding have not been anticipated early. Only three years after that, then it was uh, being published. And then after that, uh, a British um, scientist, uh, which is also a medical officer, uh, by the name of Dr. Frederick Griffith in 1928, he showed that the, uh, um, there is something that has been transferred from one bacteria into another bacteria. So this is uh, the, the experiment that he carried out. You need to take the bacteria, uh, which is uh, streptococcus, the rough one, and then the smooth one. Okay, they take the rough one, and then they inject into the mouse, nothing happened. The mouse is healthy, happy ever after. <laughs> okay, but he took the smooth one. Okay, inject into the mouse, the mouse died. And then he did repeat the experiment. He killed the smooth one. Okay, and then by heating, heating it up, and then inject into the mouse, then the mouse healthy, which means that the bacteria die. But if he take the smooth and then the heat kill and then the mixture, mix it and then inject into the mouse and the mouse die. We, he postulate that um, there are something moving from the, um, from the bacteria which is smooth into the rough one and make it um, infectious and kill the mouse. But he still doesn't know what is the thing yet until the very famous experiment um, which is uh, oh, being carried out by three scientists, Avery McLeod McCarthy. Okay, Avery McLeod McCarthy. So these three uh, scientists, um, what I put here is actually um, the death date. Eh? <laughs> Professor Avery uh, passed away in 1955. Dr. McLeod, 1972. And then McCarthy, 2005. So still young when uh, both or three of them uh, um, managed to uh, show this thing. So these three scientists, they uh, showed that whatever things happen in Griffith experiment is actually DNA. Okay, that is the, uh, the easiest, uh, the layman word. Okay, they did not win any Nobel Prize for this. So this is among the uh, um, very rare findings, very important findings, which does not uh, given a uh, Nobel Prize. Okay? Um, Dr. Avery and McLeod um, is Canadian. McLean McCarthy also is American Canadian. Okay? So they uh, produce this experiment, which is very long, uh, don't make yourself hustle to understand this. It's just an experiment to tell the scientific community that DNA has been transferred into the bacteria and killed the mouse. Not protein, not carbohydrate, not something else. Okay? So the next step, now people know. By 1944, every McLeod McCarthy experiment is in 1944. By that time, there are two groups, one in England, one in America. In America, is headed by Professor Linus Pauling. I think all of us must know, scientists, they must know, especially chemists. Linus Pauling is the very famous American scientist who discovered chemical bonding. You just name it. Okay? Chemical bonding was actually found by Linus Pauling. And Linus Pauling is the, uh, among the very rare scientists that won two Nobel Prize. So he was very powerful. He was actually working on protein, 
sickle cell anemia. He was actually sequencing the protein which is involved in the disease of uh, sickle cell anemia. So his mind is always want to be the first one. Okay. Um, oh, this is the second experiment actually. Second experiment to show that the molecule is DNA. Uh, sorry, I, 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 I uh, uh, jump into one slide. <laughs> okay. So this is the second experiment to prove Griffith experiment. Okay. So this is uh, by Martha and Chase. Uh, Mata Chase, uh, uh, Hershey and Chase. The experiment is known as Hershey and Chase. This is a problem because uh, normally I give lecture, I s sit on that side, you see? I look this side. So now I have to do another way around. So your mind is also turning over. <laughs> okay? So now, um, um, this is second experiment, uh, which is also uh, a complex experiment. It's not that complex. Uh, for scientists, for microbiologists, it's very easy. Uh, uh, Professor Hershey is actually a um, uh, fish expert. He's a work. He's a uh, he's a scientist working with bacteriophage. You know, phage, bacteriophage, uh, virus that eat on bacteria. Okay, so um, Mata Chase uh, was his um, research assistant. Okay, both of them work well. And then uh, they produce, they, they make an experiment and then they uh, show that the molecule is actually DNA. Okay, this is the, 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 the experiment. It's not, we are not going to explain this experiment. Just to show that actually DNA was the reason, um, was the molecule that been transformed from bacteria. So now everybody racing towards elucidation of the structure. Everybody want to be the one, uh, the first one. This is Linus Pauling. Okay, I will go back to my <laughs> the the track. So this is Linus Pauling. Um, he's a chemist. Uh, won Nobel Prize, no, Nobel laureate uh, twice. Uh, discover chemical bonding and uh, after he. Uh, did uh, crystallography on the DNA molecule that he did, took from his uh, previous uh, postdoc. He published. Uh, although many of his friends were saying that, sir, you, you shouldn't publish yet because uh, you are putting the phosphate um, on the other side, you know, the inner side, and your basis is outside with the three layer. And this is not a stable molecule, sir, with all my due respect. <laughs> you see? So you just imagine how you want to say something to your big boss. Of course, your big boss say, you shut down, you see? sit down and see what I do. You see? So he was so, um, um, he want to be the first one. So without, uh, cons um, uh, without uh, taking all the advices from his postdoc, which is also a very renowned scientist. His postdoc is not is not a small people leader Tatum Biddle. You see the person who discover conjugation in bacteria. They are very big person. You see in science also Nobel laureate. So he published in PNAS in 1953 because he knows there is another group in Britain which is Francis Crick and J D Watson are doing the same work, okay? So now, we don't know. He won Nobel Prize twice. One is chemistry, one is keamanan. You know, President Barack Obama won keamanan. Peace Nobel Prize, you see? So if you do good things, social work and everything, you can get peace Nobel Prize. So he was a very busy politicking, you see, in the world. Okay, that time it was uh, Second World War, uh, the era of post Second World War, and he was, you know, in politics. So he forgot about science. So that is one thing. If we are in science, forget about politics. Otherwise, you will make wrong decision. So that is the advice for me. 
So tomorrow I have to see the dean. I want to resign as a deputy dean. <laughs> I am lucky the dean gone gone out already. If the dean is here, I will not talk like this. Eh? Okay, now in this paper, in which tend to be one of the most famous mistake, is keep on keep on telling. I told my student every single year these mistakes, and then my teacher, Prof Nazlan in Penang, he keep on telling me these mistakes, and I think all of my students here will tell their students in the next generation coming. This is the very big blunders ever done by a very big scientist. And what is his reply when people ask him? Well, I want to be the first. I have won so many things, good things. You know, I have introduced chemical bonding to the to the world, to the to the human. It's just only a small mistake. So what? So that is her. Uh, that is his uh, his answer. The triple helix. The actual model is double helix, which is, uh, this is the triple helix. Eh? You can see that uh, all the bases is outside. And the phosphate is inside. And you know phosphate is negative charge. It will not stable. So this is the actual works, double helix DNA, that being discovered in the same year by Jerry Watson, an American biochemist, and Francis Crick, um, British uh, physicist. So they publish in Nature. So they are actually racing. This is when they were old. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, how how DNA that they discover can come to the conclusion that it is a double helix. And this is the most uh, exciting breakthrough in history. Okay? They are the, per the, the reason why I, I will call these two guys is a genius. Because they didn't do the experiments. When Francis Franklin and Maurice Wilkins uh, Morris Wilkins and uh, Francis Franklin is a, a very um, famous biochemist and uh, crystallographer um, working in Cambridge that time. Um, Francis uh, Franklin uh, was a postdoc, British postdoc that has been trained in Paris, uh, Pasteur Institute, a very well-known uh, crystallographer center. Even now, uh, we send students to, 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 be, to be taught crystallography uh, at Paris, because they, they have a very good um, setup. So Francis Franklin is a lady. Uh, it, what she did was she took the DNA from his boss, her boss, um, Maurice Wilkins, and then she carried out crystallographer. And she's a physicist. So if you give her DNA to physicist, what she will do? She will do what she's supposed to do: put on a machine and sit down make a coffee, and then wait, you see? and then do her best to get a very good crystallographer picture, which is failed to be, to be done by the people in America, Linus Pauling punya group that time. So, this is the work of Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin, to produce X-ray diffraction pattern. This is the diffraction pattern produced by Rosalind Franklin, and this is the one that produced by Linus Pauling postdoc. You can see, this is nothing. You cannot even differentiate between this one and this one. But here you can see, very nice, the two double helix. I am not a physicist, but I memorized but being written inside, <laughs> inside, the, inside the story. They say that if you see this thing, this is a double helix. Okay? So, the data indicate that the DNA was a highly ordered two-stranded structure with repeating substructure space every 0.34 nanometer. Okay? That is what they um, postulate. So, this is uh, Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins. Um, 
actually the true story Linus Pauling was trying to go to Cambridge to see Professor Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin but his visa was denied due to the anti-war that he was uh, propagating okay Linus Pauling is a very famous anti-war activist so the American government hate him so he cannot cross Atlantic to go to England so he cannot go and see that get the proper picture if Pauling managed to get the picture of these two uh, crystallographer definitely our history gonna be different I don't know what history and be genetics okay um, you know in Cambridge every three weeks even in Oxford every three weeks you will have top scientists Nobel laureate or good uh, scientists to, to give a talk on any topic in the area okay so ev everybody can come when Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkin giving his talk on the picture of the diffraction of the DNA JD Watson was sitting just like the way you are sitting there yeah and these two um, scientists was explaining their diffraction and when they saw the diffraction they said voila is it now I know what is it okay and this uh, the two scientists they, both of them are, 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 are they cannot postulate you need to have a biologist to sit down nicely with a physicist to explain what is the diffraction meaning so this is the diagram of what uh, Rosalind Franklin did they just put the DNA there and then bombard with the uh, radioisotopes and see the diffraction and for your information uh, Rosalind passed away very young eh? 38 years old not even married yet due to the too much exposure to the radiation uh, Rosalind Franklin Rosalind Franklin is the uh, the niece of the first commissioner a uh, British commissioner to Palestine okay okay so this is how the DNA looks like um, we are not talking much about Chagaf idea and then the ratio of the ACGT because uh, that was actually meant for my student back in PPSK okay so this is the picture of the DNA that uh, came through after they elucidate the thing okay so now this is the history if you go and check the DNA starting from the very Mendelian days move years by years you can see that it moves very fast even now if I go to HID lab and see what my student is doing I I just can't follow it you see because they are too fast every single night more than 500 publication is published on genetics in every area medical um, biomedical even agriculture even now um, uh, arts is also doing genetics okay so this is just to show you the uh, medical genetics uh, pathway of how it goes in genetics you can see here the improvement of the rate of DNA sequencing way back in 1983 uh, Fred Sanger a British scientist um, established a Sanger sequencing system okay using gel and then after that in 1980s here yeah, people stop using gel base they use capillary and now people just throw away capillary everybody is using the next generation okay so this is just to show you a few things a few things in genetics the basics that can bring us now here one of the most important things in genetics that brought us to this stage is sequencing sequencing is the method that people use to chew the DNA nucleotide by nucleotide one by one only by doing that you will know the sequence jujukan every single nucleotide of the DNA okay 
So this is the DNA sequencing during my time. I have to sleep in the lab just to get the nice picture. Because every one hour you have to stop, load another round, and then run another one hour, load another round. So my uh, normally my, my wife will do all the housework. I will do the lab work for four years. Now, people, everybody is looking on this thing. If I talk about my, my old expertise, I still remember uh, my, my Sifu, Professor Nazlan from Penang. I think all of us know him, um, especially if you are from USM. He said to me, Shahrum, you see that basket? Yes, sir. This is my thesis. His thesis was actually a sequencing of acetylactosynthase gene from Bacillus septalis. Totally sequencing. Okay, Sharon, you see that basket? This is my thesis. <laughs> That's what he did in front of me. I said, why, sir? You see, you go to the internet, you search this machine. That time, uh, it was um, 454. 454 is just nothing. People are knowing, uh, uh, using higher than that. This is 454, Roche. Okay, and then now people produce uh, Illumina Solexa genetic analyzer. And then you have applied by system, solid. So many methods that people, this is just to show you uh, what, yes, another five minutes, okay. What we have now for the sequencing. By using the old method, by using the old method, this is a 3730, the old method, you have to spend around 15 million, 15 million to sequence this amount of size DNA. But by using 454, it's just only 2.5 million, more or less. But if you use uh, Solexa, it's around 600 only. So that's how people just throw it throw the things in the drain because the, the, the more time uh, goes, the more um, uh, advanced machine being carried out, being produced and then can do cheaper things. Now, the new phenomena, only two things, new phenomena in genetics. This is the, the, the thing that came out into the, in the internet. The genetically modified foods can pass from food to human blood. It was reported in in uh, PLOS online. Okay, this is based on the analysis of uh, 1,000 human samples. They have shown that uh, uh, report evidence that uh, male derived DNA fragments which are large enough to carry complete genes can avoid degradation and through an unknown mechanism. And thank you, Dr. Teguh, for sending this to me. Enter the human circulation system. Just last year. This is the first phenomena. The second one. What you eat before you conceive affect your baby's DNA. This is the second thing. The one that being published just last month in Nature. This is actually the experiment. Uh, they did it in uh, animal in the first place and then after that they do it in the human in Gambia and they have shown that um, maternal diet is actually transferable to the baby okay this is the reason behind epigenetics we have been learning about genetics many many years and every single mutation we always think that it must be changing of nucleotides there must be some rosa. You must have already exposed yourself to X-ray or something, you know. You kill your, your DNA. But there are inheritable mechanisms that control gene expression without affecting any mutation. No mutation, nothing. But they are express. What is the reason? The new era of epigenetics. Okay. This is the one example. The word of uh, Professor Jenny Lee from Harvard. They were actually explaining why Leon hypothesis is happening in human. You know Leon hypothesis? Bar body. You remember medical doctor, kan? Uh, bar body, if you go and take uh, uh, DNA from uh, Felix, kan? you can see bar body. Felix is kucing. Okay? 
you can see the bar body in one of the uh, X chromosome. Why? Because one X chromosome is in inactive in 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 in, uh, in in female. So that is actually the reason of a protein which which is called CTCF. Okay, this is actually the protein which allow me to talk a lot because I did my PhD on CTCF characterization. So what CTCF done was it just go and bind to the imprinting center and control both chromosomes. This is X chromosome active. This is X chromosome in inactive. If there is methyl group, no changing sequence. Eh? Just you put methyl group here. The CTCF cannot bind. So this X chromosome will becoming inactive. Shortly speaking, lah. no need to go and think about what happened inside. So that is the way how it goes. Which means that the gene can be controlled without changing of sequence. Okay? I think that's about all. Just to share you a few important things that uh, I, I, I got in my lecture. Thank you very much.